Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And today we're going to be looking at uh, a bit of an interesting one. And that is, why do some Springboks almost sort of seem to achieve a whole different level of performance when they put on the green and gold compared to when they play for their clubs? Do Springboks reserve their best performances for their country? What is it that sort of um, changes them from um, you know the, the the club performance they've had with some players, for example, like a C.A. Khalees who's struggled with form when it comes to club rugby, but all of a sudden he puts on a Springbok jersey and uh, he just takes it up a different level. And, and over the weekend, we saw one of the all-time great C.A. Khaleesi performances on the back of comments from the wrestling owner talking about the fact that he was overweight um, and the fact and 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 the very common transparency of Khaleesi was. Um, you know, bulldozing his way over several Irish players last weekend and, uh, you know, reminding everybody just how good of a rugby player he really is. So we're going to be looking at that. You know, what is it about um, some of these players? And it's quite a nuanced issue, I think, you know. Um, and before we look into it, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Now, let me start off by saying I don't think there is a single player in that Springbok environment that goes back to their clubs or their unions and specifically sort of holds back and doesn't want to give their all for their clubs. You know, that's not the type of players or people they are, really. You know, it's it's very much the attitude of, you know, that kind of do or die, give every last, um, you know, bit of themselves. That's what gets them into the spring market environment. That's what keeps them in the spring market environment. You look at like a Cheslin Colby and the work rate he brings. He's one of the best players in the world anyway. And then he brings that work rate, which just takes it to a whole different level. And so let's sort of start off by that. I say, you know, C.A. Cleese is definitely not sort of sitting there not caring about playing for wrestling and not wanting to be, you know, one of wrestling's best players. Um, and I think also what was quite interesting is we've got to sort of judge them from the, a very fair lens. The problem is also is we look at sort of our international players and you always expect them to be like the best players on the field when they play at, at club level. And I think, you know, especially when you look at the top 14 or when you play like Champions Cup or Challenge Cup rugby, the standard's really high. And, uh, you know, there are going to be games where they might not be the best player on the field. And, and that's kind of quite natural. But there's no doubt that certain players just do seem to be a different type of animal when they play uh, for the Springboks. Now, I think this is quite an interesting issue because I think it's lots of different factors so that which factor into it. So if we take, for example, the Sia Khaleesi um, situation. Now, this is a player who... Um, you know, after sort of COVID stuff like that, made his move to the Sharks. And if you're going to be brutally honest, never really let the, sort of lit the world on fire whilst in a Sharks jersey. And um, I think there's a, quite a, a combination of reasons for that. You know, I think that, first of all, I think it was a Sharks environment and a Sharks team, which wasn't necessarily hitting his straps. We saw how their struggles, you know, culminated in this awful URC season that they've just had. Uh, and I think that they still had those kind of issues. And uh, he then went over to, to wrestling, and he played a reasonable amount um, this past season. I mean, he, he managed, you know, 1,300 minutes. So it's not like he was a bit part player. You know, even Etzebeth has been criticized previously when he was over in France, saying that, you know, we signed this player and he's never available. Sia Khaleesi's played a lot of rugby for, for wrestling, and almost too much rugby. An interesting thing that he himself said, that usually when he plays for spring marks, he plays about 50 to 55 minutes. He goes and he empties the tank. When he's playing for wrestling this season, he has averaged 73 minutes. And he even made mention of the fact that he's been having to play full 80s, which he just traditionally hasn't always done. And he's had to adapt to that. And he said he's, you know, he's gotten a bit fitter, but he said, um, you know, it's it's changed his game a little bit. Because the box, the way the boxes will work is that they sort of tell, especially their pack, go and empty that tank. You know, go and be absolutely flat out for 40 minutes, 45, 50 minutes. Don't worry about trying to last the 80. You know, don't worry about... You know, cons you know, conserving energy here and there, you know, maybe jogging back to a certain, to a ruck or whatever. You go and you empty that tank. As soon as we see it's empty, we'll pull you off. You know, give us your all. And I think it is a bit of a different attitude to when you're playing a full 80 and you have to kind of manage yourself so that you're not, you know, a passenger in that final sort of 10 minutes. Um, I also think it's very, very simple when you look at certain players, environment makes such a big difference, you know. At least he's spoken about the fact that, you know, he had to adjust when he went over to Paris. You know, players who have been homesick, players who have really struggled leaving South Africa, trying to adapt to a new environment, you know, language issues, for example, um, in a different sort of player um, environment. When you compare to when you come back to a Springbok environment, which if you've ever been around, is so, so conducive to being your best, best self. And I think when you're comfortable, when you're in a good mood, you've got family around you, that's a very, very important thing. You know, for example, on Fridays, all the families often join the team in the team hotel, for example, and there's a really relaxed mood. You then go in and play in front of a Loftus or a Durban or an Ellis Park, for example, you've got 70, 80,000 people that absolutely adore you. You know, every sort of 
aspect of the environment is geared towards getting the best out of you. And and this is where I think some players respond to the big occasions. I mean, you see at least you watch him running out for the spring box, leading out the way when he sprints out. He's a different player. You can just see this is what he lives for. He lives for spring box rugby. And that's a completely really different environment for when you're playing week on, week off um, in, in sort of for wrestling. So it's it's a very interesting sort of situation where you look at some of these players and you know, this is why people are talking about is, is signing a Springbok player, for example, a in inverted commas, a bad environment. So Arkes Neyman is somebody who's come out under a bit of criticism for the fact that if you go back and look at last season, he played 313 minutes for Munster. Um since the end of the UR season last season from August, he has gone on to play um I'm not gonna lie to you. 373 minutes for for the Springboks. Um, if we take away his um, and didn't play against um, Wales, so we take away his 31 minutes. He played 300 and um, almost about 30, 320 minutes just between those build up to the World Cup and during the World Cup. I mean, even during the World Cup, he played 228 minutes. So you know he's a player that just hasn't been available for Manchester. Uh, this season's been a lot better for Manchester. You know, you can't sit there and say that he hasn't been involved. You know, he was he he was obviously away for the beginning of the season when he was still getting back from the World Cup and was injured. Um, so he only returned in February this year. But since then, played consistently. He played, you know, around 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 for Munster. He played in the URC uh, quarterfinals as well as the semifinals. He did play um, for Munster 521 minutes uh, this season. So he has been available and he has played those games. Um, but, you know... That's been a very frustrating thing, you know, where he always seems to be available for the spring box, but not for Manchester. And I don't think it's entirely, I think it has been quite um, by accident, you know, I, I don't think it's been deliberate, but, you know, it's just that the injuries have kind of aligned. But there's a certain amount, I think there's a certain amount that you're not going to sit there trying to ration yourself back for the end of your club season when you've got a World Cup looking at you. You know, you are going to try and make sure you take every single step to make sure that you are ready for your country. You also look at Andre Pollard, for example, and, you know, when he was playing for Montpellier, he was playing 50% of his games off the bench. Um, and wasn't wasn't a regular starter um, for for um, Montpellier when when he was there. Even in his first season, which was you know his better season, only played sort of sixty seven percent of the games starting. And he went from that um, to then playing full eighties for the Springboks in in a time where uh, you know we hammered New Zealand at at in Mombella, for example. Uh, and that's kind of you know again you know a player who doesn't really matter what he's been doing uh, you know domestically. You put him in a box jersey in the right environment, and he kind of always um, sort of steps up. So. It's an interesting one, isn't it? You know, Etzebeth, for example, as well, you know, was somebody that people deemed a bad signing when he was, uh, he was, he was in France, a uh, different player when he's over here. And it's a bit different to players like a Jasper Visa, for example, and Andre Esterhazen, who continue to light up, you know, the, the, the premiership at the clubs and then not always be able to do the same thing in, in, in a Springbok jersey compared. And obviously, I mean, Esterhazen is competing with Damien Delendi, one of the best inside centers of all time for the box. Um, but I think the main thing is is it's a it's more a a, a a a reflection of how good the Springbok environment is versus to how bad other environments are. But it goes to show you that in order to get the best out of players, you've got to create an environment that lends itself to getting the best out of them as a person and and then as a player. And I think that's for example where the Lions have done th- um, things very well this season. When you look at the player group that they've got, and it's not anywhere near the player group of the other three unions, but I think there has been an environment. I think within the team itself, the team culture, the actual union, there's a bit of a bit of a joke and a bit of a mess. But I think within the team, there's a bit of a culture there which lends itself towards getting every single last sort of inch or every last bit of talent out of these players, which is why they have overperformed. Really, you know, missed out on a, on a playoff on a, on a technicality, and uh, you know, finished way ahead of the Sharks, um, despite not having those players. So I think it's an interesting thing, you know, for example, you look at unions, I think Storm has got that very much right under John Dobson, where they've created an environment to, you know, to really promote players who are discarded by other unions. You mind Lee Box, for example, who went from Bulls to Sharks, was a bit part player, and now he's a World Cup winner. And it goes to show that if you want these players to perform at the highest level, you've got to create that environment. And it's got, it's almost a bit of a word of caution. If you go and sign players, you know, um, that are doing really well in other leagues, you've got to understand what makes them tick why they're performing so well in that team and how do you replicate that kind of environment? How do you, you know, solve those issues when they go overseas? Because you can't just, you know, you can't, we've evidently seen it. You're not just, you know, picking a player, plucking him out of a team, putting him in another team and expecting him to be the same level because that's just not the case. 
Let me know what you think. Are there any other factors, for example? You know, is this one of those things where, you know, maybe signing a spring market for an overseas team isn't the best decision? I mean, we've seen a lot of these players have been tremendously successful. Chesn Colby was phenomenal when he was over in France. Pierre Steph, the toy, Jesse Creel, Quaker Smith, Malcolm Marks, they've all been fantastic in Japan, for example. Um, so, yeah, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.